Disclaimer, if you are one of those people who consistently deny Warframe's content stagnation and or Warframe's decreasing players, leave now. Warframe is dying. No shit, Sherlock. There, I said it. Our player count, at least on Steam, has been decreasing since July of this year. It's gotten so low that Minecraft DayZ and totally not an Overwatch clone are ahead of us now in terms of players. Let's also not forget that in the past month, three Warframe content creators have either quit or gone on indefinite break, with based Muga Muga being one of those three. But in all seriousness, you know there's a problem when your biggest Warframe promoter jumps ship first. Nevertheless, the attention and potential players Warframe could receive is going down, along with the number of content creators. Let's do some math here. Myself included, there are 42 different English-speaking Warframe content creators, 39 if you want to subtract Mogamu, Vaus, and Fate. The total subscriber count of those 42 channels is a little over 1 million people not including French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, German, or Chinese Warframe YouTubers. Baus Phoenix is currently the only content creator who has completely quit Warframe, and Mugamu is on indefinite break along with Fate. To fully understand by how much the Warframe audience on YouTube would drop if Fate and Mugamu decide to quit entirely as well, let's go a bit further. For the purpose of this, let's pretend that every single subscriber to every single Warframe channel is a unique person, meaning that for this scenario, there aren't any people subscribed to multiple channels. Now, if we chip away the fan numbers that Mogamu, Vaus, and Fei have together from the total of 1 million-ish people, we get this. Again, pretending that every subscriber is unique and does not follow multiple channels. 29.4% of the total Warframe audience on YouTube would be lost should Fate and Mugamu decide to also quit, at the most. Yes, Mugamu makes up the bulk of that 29.4%, but that doesn't mean smaller channels are irrelevant. If your game is noticeably dwindling and people wanting to play it or make videos about it, then non-Warframe players will assume there's something wrong with the game. After all, a game that is losing both fans and promoters doesn't exactly attract a lot of potential players. If you want an example of how bad a game can get without willing content creators or happy players, take a look at Firefall. Before you say that none of this matters because Warframe has 22 million registered accounts, realize that registered accounts don't mean jack shit. For comparison, World of Warcraft has over 100 million registered accounts. Yet their subscription peak has been a little over 12 million players. Guild Wars 2 has over 7 million registered accounts, yet their peak player count has been 460,000 people, and to this day that peak has not been broken, the same going for Warframe. Realize that there's a reason why DE chooses to release player registration numbers but not the average daily player count or anything related to peak players. At this point of not having received any new content, I would say that the war within has put itself in a very bad spot, where it can make or break the game. If the quest is trash, then the war within will be the final nail in Warframe's coffin. If the quest is just geyser levels of incredible, then it's probable that Warframe will live on for a while without any issues. The biggest mistake of the war within was that it was announced too early, given how far it's been pushed back, as the first teaser for it was released back in April a little over four months after the second dream was released. In my opinion, it would have been wiser to announce the Lunaro and Spectres of the Rail portions of Update 19 first rather than directly saying that a new cinematic quest is coming, because doing that first just leaves everyone hanging for months at a time with not much to do, such as right now. Even if the Roar Within becomes the greatest update ever received by Warframe, it will do little to address the other problems that Warframe has such as the poor new player experience, the broken enemy scaling, and the ever-increasing cliff that is power creep. Even though DE has already stated their solution for the community's demand for universal vacuum, I can't help but feel that it's unnecessarily intricate. Rather than giving us straight up universal vacuum, we're getting a three-way partitioned version of vacuum for sentinels. Whether DE meant three different versions of vacuum for all companions or three different versions of vacuum for sentinels only, it's still a shitty answer to the universal vacuum request. I can half guarantee you that when this version of universal vacuum drops, 
the you won't touch it or do anything about it ever again, because the idea of universal vacuum is apparently lethal to their brains and ears, much like a hydroid or Oberon rework. But at the end of the day, there's for sure going to be someone who beats the roar with an and completes all the content in less than a week, only to go back to the usual cycle of waiting for more shit. Business as usual, I suppose. Thank you for watching.